Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. Today I'm joined by Catherine Maris from Motability and Keir Haynes from Designability, two charities that are working really hard to try and find a really clear set of guidelines to uh, help people who are designing and installing EV charging infrastructure so it's available to everyone. So Catherine, can you explain why accessibility is so important in this area? Definitely. So research with RADC and from our user engagement work with designability shows that there are a number of accessibility challenges with public charging infrastructure. Um, this includes high curves, heavy cables, and, and I could go on and on. But I think the really important point here um, is that in order to make the transition to electric vehicles successful, everyone needs to be able to take part. No one should be left behind. So we need to think about how we make this infrastructure accessible to all. I think it's the right thing to do socially, but also there's a commercial case for this. We know that later, as more and more people with different needs switch over to EVs, they're going to be having a hard time with this infrastructure. And then people responsible for putting in that infrastructure will have to retrofit it. That's going to be really costly, really expensive. So there is a case for really designing inclusively from the start, and that window is probably now. When I think about it, there's already quite a lot of electric charging infrastructure gone in, probably without any thought about this. So what, what, what is the scale of the, the challenge ahead? The scale of the problem is potentially immense. Uh, so we know that one in five people in the UK self-identify as disabled. That's a lot of people who are going to be um, accessing public charging infrastructure that hasn't always been designed with their needs in mind. We also did some research with Ricardo Consulting that estimates there will be 2.7 million disabled drivers or passengers in the UK by 2035 with up to half of those people, so 1.4 million disabled people, reliant on public charging infrastructure because of their particular home parking situation. So that's a lot of people who are going to be reliant on a public network that at the moment really doesn't cater to their needs. OK, who, who can benefit from public charging accessibility? So the consideration of those with limited strength, yeah. dexterity and stamina is really important. At the moment, plugging in the vehicle itself is very difficult, and for some, they're not able to do that. Um, and we've also got people with larger vehicles. So they may have a wheelchair accessible vehicle and they might have a ramp or a lift or a hoist to help them get in and out of the vehicle. So having the right amount of space for them to be able to park their vehicle and move around the charge point is really important. But not only do disabled people benefit by improved accessibility, there's others with access needs as well, whether they be parents, perhaps carrying a child or older people. In fact, any of us at some point in our life could be charging a vehicle when we have greater access needs or some kind of disability. So ultimately, better accessibility benefits all of us yeah. um, now and in the future. Um, and that's really exciting that if we get this right for the disabled people, that we get it right for everybody. Because I don't think anyone who's like super fit young athlete stops in an electric car which is accessible for disabled people and gets out and goes, oh, it's just too accessible. I mean, no one's going to complain about it. It's going to make it better for everybody, basically. I mean, and it's not just in public charging, but you know, any product that's used by the public or service, um, if we can get it right for those with greater access needs, almost all of the time we get it right. We, we, it's, it's a better experience for everybody. For everybody yeah. So what are the kind of accessibility challenges then? You know, I can imagine there's quite a few. Uh, we've observed a range of challenges for disabled people when charging in public and if we look at the public charging journey before the journey's even started understanding what the accessibility of a site is like if that's not known and at the moment that information isn't available that makes that journey it begins with anxiety and a level of risk of can i charge when i get there and then arriving at a charge point location being able to have enough space to park and to get access in and out of the vehicle. For example, people with mobility aids, whether that be a wheelchair, a walking aid, for example, a frame or crutches. Um, and then when engaging with the charge point itself, being able to get close enough to it, we've experienced um, protection of the charge point in the form of bollards yeah. or wheel stops, which mean that some disabled people just can't get close enough. They can't reach the charge point and they, therefore they can't interact with it. And then those challenges continue when you're actually charging the vehicle. So the weight of the cable, um, the awkwardness of 
handling the connector and getting it into the vehicle and some of that is caused by where the where the socket is on the vehicle and the, the interaction with a screen on a charge point in terms of getting close enough to it can yeah. be a barrier and also having to um, use an app for example so downloading an app or using an app in order to charge so um, I guess the challenge to the industry is you know can we enable appless charging for example contactless payment is really helpful in reducing the number of steps that's required and if we also look a bit more broadly at the site and where the charge point is. It's really important for those with additional needs that they've got facilities in close proximity to the charge point, for example, the toilet, um, and that the, the route from the charge point to those facilities is also accessible. So the accessibility actually goes beyond the charge point, wider, wider on the site. People have shared with us that um, feeling, feeling secure and safe is really important and that's down to lighting, that's down to having the right kind of shelter from the weather um, so that it can be a pleasant experience. Yeah. Also potentially CCTV, we've heard some interesting crossovers with the women's safety agenda as well, yeah. how a lot of women have expressed they don't feel safe charging at charge points. So again, that's another example of if we work to make charge points more accessible, that will benefit a wider group of people. Because it is one of those things you don't, I mean, I don't think about. So I'm, you know, I get out of my car and it was only after meeting you when at Fully Charged Live, I went, oh, hang on a minute. Because I had, a, it was a touch to pay charger. I plugged the car in and I went, oh, I'm standing up, wait a minute. I squatted down and I went, I can't, I could, I can't could. reach. And you know, to be fair to industry and disabled uptake of electric vehicles today it has been very low. Yeah. Um, but with a 2030 ban on the sale of petrol, new petrol and diesel cars, that's definitely going to change. And so, you know, I think there is this kind of element of a lot of the people we speak to, right? They say, oh, you know, I wish I'd thought about this. I'm really sorry. I do want to make these changes. Yeah. I do want a more inclusive experience um, for, for the consumers that are going to, to access my infrastructure. But I didn't, I didn't know about this. Can you help mm -hmm. us? And I think yeah. that's where the standards work come in, comes in yeah. because we're defining what accessibility means, what it looks like. We're doing this work with designability that kind of um, supports industry to implement that in a really kind of practical way. We're not talking about massive changes, and this yeah. is something Kira and I discuss all the time. The changes we're talking about are not revolutionary by any means. It's just about getting best practice, right? When we talk about exciting innovation, I think the, the excitement here for me is putting this on the agenda early enough and allowing public accessibility to be a thing from now. So it, 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 we're not going to reinvent the wheel here necessarily. There's some good examples out there um, and in, in other industries in terms of how you um, deliver a public service or a public product. But the, yeah, the excitement is that we are doing this now. Yeah. And although there's some charges out there that are not as accessible as they could be, we stand to benefit by doing it now and not waiting another 10 years. So Catherine, what, what is Motability doing that? Because presumably this is a, a kind of challenge that needs a lot of different people involved in it. I mean, the, I'm assuming the government and legislation so that you know people have to build charge points in a certain way. Yes, uh, so we're really excited that we're sponsoring national accessible charging standards in partnership with the Office for Zero Emissions Vehicles through the British Standards Institution. Uh, it's going to be um, the first set of standards of this kind in the world, so right. no other country has actually done um, national accessible charging standards before. The UK is going to be the first. We've had a few other countries get in touch with us because they see this as a real space of innovation and leadership um, that the UK is, is, is kind of taking part in. And in addition to that, we're actually funding innovators like Designability um, to, to kind of demonstrate what's best practice in terms of accessible charge point design, um, engage with disabled people, understand their user requirements, and kind of publish those resources on our website free and accessible for all so that industry and government can use that um, to influence and change what they're doing. In a sense it's about inclusive design, it's about thinking about these things right from the start I'm guessing and the, you know there's got to be a lot of challenges that I, I, I sort of think always oh, yes, I can understand that. There's a load of things I can't even imagine. Yeah so inclusive design means that as you say from the very start the needs of any potential user of a product are considered so that the product can meet their needs and this is particularly important for disabled users. Um, in my mind, and certainly what we practice at Designability, is that all design is inclusive. Yeah. Um, and so it's the job of me, myself as a designer, or engineers and innovators and manufacturers, to ensure that the needs of any user are considered from the very start. So what does that look like in practice? Um, it means engaging with those users, and in our case with disabled users, to understand their needs and then working with them throughout the development of new ideas and solutions, testing those with them before deployment to ensure that solutions in 
in real terms when, they, when they're out in the public yeah. meet their needs and you can be confident about that. And so if we can, if we can adopt that way of thinking with public charging infrastructure and we can adopt that approach to design, then we're in a really good place to ensure that any solution now and in the future is accessible for not just disabled people, but from everybody. And that's why I'm really excited about the work that Motability are doing and how we're supporting that. And the really positive feedback from industry um, after our initial work to kind of put this on the agenda to say, right. we're listening, we want to make this happen. Um, so yeah. Well, that's a good sign that, the, the, in fact, the industry that do this aren't going, oh, no, it's too much trouble, we don't want to bother. They're actually, they're keen yeah. to do it. Absolutely, and that means that if we're, if we're doing that now, the transition for, for disabled people towards EVs is smoother, not you know, for, the, for, for end users, um, for industry, and um, for government. Because it is that, though, even those very simple things, I mean, I've used a charger where I went, well, I can't, I've got to move the car because this cable won't reach. And then I realised that the cable was on an amazing lever that went right over the top. Oh, and then, you know, then you pull it out, you go, oh, it fits, you know. So simple things like that actually mean that you could park the car in several different positions, have more room to access it. You know, there are solutions, I suppose. That's the thing to, to the potential Absolutely. problems you could face. Certainly with, you know, we look at batteries and battery capacities and sizes, and we, you know, there's a big challenge at the moment with the rapid charge units. Yeah. There's a big thick cable, yeah. and it's got a cooling system in it. And, but we foresee in the future that, you know, that cable hopefully will get smaller yeah, yeah, and lighter. And because and at the time. moment, it's a big challenge, you yeah. know, even if it swings out, you know, it's kind of pulling against me, yeah. and that's tricky. So then we need to look at perhaps the vehicle and say, you know, if we can put the charge charge socket on the vehicle at the front, yeah. then that cable becomes much shorter um, and therefore lighter. So it's, it's I think uh, the, the, the charging industry, there's certainly lots to do, um, but, but it'd be fantastic industry, as yeah. well to see the car industry yeah. saying, actually there's things we can do with our vehicles that can improve accessibility. What can people do you know, to help this come about and to in ensure that that accessibility is, is as widespread as possible? So if you're someone from industry or government who's watching this, um, we'd encourage you to think about you know, whether you're procuring or installing or providing um, charging infrastructure and to take a look at some of the resources we have on the Motability website to get in touch uh, with us, with Motability and with Designability and we can start having a conversation about uh, you know, what, what's the support you need, what are the questions you have, um, what are the changes you can make to start making this experience better for everyone. If you're an individual, if you're a consumer watching this and um, you, you're kind of thinking, oh, well, I'm starting to notice these accessibility challenges. You know, I went to a charging site the other day and I noticed a really high curb or a heavy cable or bollards that were spaced too close together. You know, feed that back to the charging site and say, you know, this is something I've been thinking about and see if they can take that forward. And if you're a disabled person watching this and you'd like to have your voice heard, uh, please do get in touch with us and, and we'll explore what we can do. There's certainly a demand. I'm very aware that there's a demand from people with disabilities to, to use electric vehicles. Definitely. And at the end of um, Fully Charged Live, your show uh, that took place in September, uh, actually a woman came up to me um, at the end of the panel that we did together. Um, and she was using a mobility aid and um, she was nearly in tears and she said, thank you. Right. I want to do my bit. I'm really passionate about the environment, but I've never seen anyone like me or, or anyone talk about me and what I need. And right. so that felt really empowering that um, we are at the beginning of this journey to make sure everyone can feel included and can do their bit to make sure um, we stay green. Well, thanks so much, guys. I was really impressed with what you're doing. I think it's, it's clearly vitally important. It's a really, you know, it's a really important point, and particularly at this time when we're just ramping up that, that kind of infrastructure. It's, it's great. Thanks. Thanks so much. And uh, if you want to know any more about motability or design the links are in the description beneath this video that's all we've got time for I think it's an incredible thing please do support them ask them questions ask the charging points that you use to make them better and as always if you have been thank you for watching <laughs>